Hello everyone. Welcome to the uh, Society of Canadian Artists Art Chat. Uh, today we are going to have a very special guest and her name is Monica Wright. My name is Marissa Sweet and I am the Vice President and Social Media Director for the uh, Society of Canadian Artists. So tonight, as I was saying, we are going to have Monica Wright, who is an elected member, a abstract, um, an abstract, um, an abstract painter, an abstract contemporary abstract artist. So I'm very excited to welcome her. So I'm gonna invite her to join us in the live and we can get to know Monica and her process and what she's working on right now and what's going on in Halifax. Okay, so hang on, I'm gonna just uh, uh, invite her to join. And receiving the invite soon. Hey! Work? Did it work? Yay. It did! Oh my god! <laughs> it did! So you have to be just about. Oh, am I? You have to be vertical. Oh. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Does it work this way, or am I upside down? You're upside down, which is okay, <laughs> but <laughs> it'll make me dizzy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta take the plug out. Okay. Here we go. Does oh, that that's perfect. Yeah, okay. lovely. <laughs> lovely. Yay. So, how are you, Monica? I'm. Very well. Now that we're connected, I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of just, um, uh, well, you know, just understanding Instagram. And, and, and uh, there are different ways of connecting to live. And, and I'm still also trying to, to, to find the best way. And I think you got it. So, got it. so we're, Great. we're on. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So I just wanted to introduce you to um, our uh, viewers uh, online and just read a little bit about your bio and then, and then we can go ahead and, and do our art chat if that's okay with you. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. Okay. So for everyone who is listening uh, tonight live, I know Karen Rich Richter is live uh, in uh, Calgary, so she's watching us right now too. Hi, <laughs> Karen. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, Monica. Monica's biography. She moved from Toronto to Halifax. Wow, in two thousand and five. And you have to tell me about that because that's a big move, city to a, a more um, a quieter uh, way of life. I would say, yeah. And, and soon began her creative journey, and first in photography, and then eventually returning back to painting. She enthusiast, in, enthusiastically developed a distinctive style, which led to recognition first locally and then internationally, uh, with her artworks included in collections throughout Europe and North and South America. Uh, among her awards is the prestigious Mary Pratt Crystal Award. Congratulations for that. Um, that was during our Canada's 150 uh, anniversary of the Confederation. Wow, 2017. That's such a prestigious award. Congratulations again for that, Monica. Monica is represented by galleries in Canada and also participates in special exhibitions worldwide. Uh, her work is published in literary and medical journals. Oh my God. Fiddleheads Literary Journal, International Women Celebrate, En Route Magazine, Exposure, Echoes of Elizabeth Bishop, CBC Sharing the View, and Arts Illustrated Magazine and The Breath of Life. Oh my God, this is like, uh, that is so awesome. <laughs> Monica is an elected member of the Society of Canadian Artists and a member of the Art SPA, the Art. CARFAC, and PCAFA. Did I get that right? You did. <laughs> 
Well, welcome, Monica. Wow, this is such a, a, an impressive bio, and, and I'm so honored to have you tonight uh, as our guest. And I'm honored to be here. Thanks for Yay. asking. Yeah. So how, how is it right now in, in Halifax? How, how is everything? Everything is good. It's safe. It's, you know, we're really, really fortunate here because mm -hmm. life is not normal, but, you know, compared to the way it is in Ontario and, and other parts of Canada, mm -hmm. it's pretty good here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're entering a, a third wave lockdown here. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It, 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 it's tough on everyone. It's tough yeah. on everyone. But I think yeah. it, it, it is, uh, you know, as soon as we all get at least, you know, that first vaccination, I think, I think uh, it will, uh, it'll help a lot, especially the hospitals that are getting overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 I've got oh, my hi, Andrea oh, said. Oh, you did? Oh, good for you. <laughs> um, they're opening it up right now. So for 50 to... 50 up or something at the pharmacist yeah. next week. So, so yeah, I should well, probably I, get mine. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, we got a question here already. Maybe we can answer that. Can you see it, Monica? Uh, what art movement or, oh, here, I'll read it. What art okay. movement or artist has influenced your personal style, Monica? And can you show reference to that? in any particular piece or use of your medium? Well, um, I think there's lots of different artists. Um, that has influenced your personal style. James, James Terrell, because, you know, he's oh. got these light installations that are just vibrant and so full of color, Chihuly, you know, the glass. Yes. And I've had people say before that, some of my art reminds them of stained glass. Yeah, yeah. Translucence of, you know, so I yeah. guess there's something to that light. So both those people, I, I just really admire them. But honestly, I think it started with photography and when I started abstracting photography because you get the light there, you understand values and you, you understand shapes and lights and shadow uh, on a two-dimensional plane mm -hmm. very differently and then you look at it as on a screen so um i think that's how i translated it eventually into painting into your paintings into the paintings yeah i, I don't know if that answered the question for whoever asked it but uh I don't know. Maybe Andrea can 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 let us know if that was the answer she was looking for. <laughs> okay, Andrea had to ask a difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody I'll is very. Yeah. You're my first abstract um, artist guest, so I I am also very very um, uh, inspired by that because early in my career, well, yeah, I started really playing around with abstracts, so. Um, and then eventually I went back to my first love, which is impressionistic landscape. So uh, that, that, that's where I am. Uh, that's where I belong. <laughs> but I, I usually start my pieces with uh, just big values, big shapes, and just going um, and exploring the abstraction of, mm -hmm. of a scene b without going into too much detail. So, yeah. So that's... that's uh, that's how I, I start my work. But let me know about your process. How do you start your work, Monica? Um, well, usually, usually they start very loose. And, you know, one of my challenges, as, as it is for many artists, I think, is overworking it. So I have to pull back all the time and try to stop myself from overworking it. But, you know, starting often with just a wash or just a... a a spray of something and you know there's depending on whether I'm doing a water abstract water scene or something truly non objective then you know it's sort of layering it and usually just you know starting with two or three colors yeah and building and layering from there seeing sort of it's kind of mark making where I respond to what is on the canvas so I start right. with something and then I respond to what's there so it's not always 
totally planned. In fact, I have such trouble, um, even if I use a reference photo, which I don't generally do. Yeah. Uh, I just, I can't follow it. I just end up going. It's like, I don't cook with recipes. I don't do anything. I don't read instructions. Yeah. Because my brain doesn't work that way. Yeah, you're just going for the intuition, right? So you're just yeah. letting your artistic intuition flow, which it, is great. Yeah. I'm not good at playing by the rules. <laughs> Actually, that was the other question I wanted to ask, but you answered it already, is that do you go by a, a reference photo and then you abstract it from there? No. I, I mean, I've been taking this um, oil painting workshop where she's forcing us to use a photo. Yeah. Um, so I've done it can if I really apply myself but it's not what I like to do <laughs> and you, you're doing a lot um, sorry you're doing a lot of, of uh, you have different um different categories right you've got your you've got your space which is the cosmos and the then cosmos, you've got the, the water sky. yes yep and then the really truly um, non-objective abstracts. Non-objective. Yeah. yeah. Which is probably my favorite thing to do. Right. Um, yeah. Because I, I find it's unique. Whereas um, the other things aren't really unique to me. Yes. Same way. So do you turn your canvas around in all sides? Yes. So you can you can see... Oh, this is going cool, and then I'll go in that direction, and then you turn it again, and then oh, it looks kind of nice here too, so I'll go in that direction. Yeah, and that's why I don't use a normal easel because yeah, um, I, I paint flat or sometimes up on the table um, or a ledge or something, and I kind of rigged something up. But it's because I'm constantly taking the painting and flipping it upside down, and actually, a lot of my paintings, well, not the water scenes, but you know. But um, a lot of the abstracts, I, oops, that was the cord. Um, I actually wire them and sign them so that they can be hung vertically and horizontally. Yeah, yeah. So you have no. the option. So when I'm painting it, of course, it has to make sense um, both ways. So you're, you're usually, uh, sorry, I'm just adjusting my chair here. Um, so you're usually um, down, you look at it top down so you're looking at your your uh, surface flat um well when i start out because often it's a paint very wet to begin with mm -hmm. and i have to move the paint around um so i can't have it you know standing if i'm standing doing yeah to begin with it's flat but then right. you know, i move it i move the canvas a lot yeah, yeah. so it, and it's uh watercolor acrylic or you combine or it's all acrylic it's all acrylic yeah it's all acrylic but you know i i use some of it quite thick and some of it quite thin um you know i i thin it with uh pink conditioner pouring medium water pouring medium different things different all different things alcohol yeah. I just play with a lot of different techniques. What is your favorite uh, brand? What do you play around with? Is it golden? You know, I, I use a lot of different things. So I have a lot of golden. I have triart. I have yep. some, I have some Liquitex. Um, I'm very sad that Stevenson went out of business. Right. Yeah. Because they had, oh, just loaded with pigment. And, yeah. Uh, I heard, uh, yeah, I have a few other artist friends who are very sad that Stevenson decided yeah. uh, to close shop, and uh, because they're they're they made their own paints, right? So it was it was was quite nice. Yeah, it yeah. was good quality, good, good quality colors. Um, yeah. Anyways, they're gone, so I so you, and I, I mix up a lot of stuff. So yeah, yeah. Oh, you're getting a lot of hearts here. I don't know if <laughs> if you could see Instagram, but there's lots of hearts coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So have you? Um, so you mentioned in your bio that you moved from Toronto. So were you born in Toronto? 
Toronto, that's how I pronounce it. Not Toronto, but Toronto. <laughs> I was actually born in Goose Bay. Um, in where? Goose Bay, Labrador. Ah! Yeah, but I, I left there when I was quite young. Um, moved to Germany, then moved back to Canada and grew up, mostly grew up in Windsor, Ontario. Okay. And, and as soon as I finished university, I moved to Toronto. Mm. And then worked there for most of my adult life until I moved here. Did you take up fine art? Did you? No, what, I'm pretty did... self-taught. I was a real estate agent. Oh, okay. So you were in the business world. Yeah, yeah. W worked crazy, crazy hours. And then really, you know, I took a few courses here and there, but it was a lot of work. And when I wasn't working, I was traveling. So I came to art mm, kind of late. Late in the game, yeah. yeah. Late, like in, like in our twenties, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I get you. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so you you haven't always been a working artist. Do you consider yourself a working artist now? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So and I and you studio, so I better work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, do you, do you, you're, you're teaching as well, which would segue to your, your, your class, which is happening in person, right? In person. In yeah. person. I know. Shocking. And, and, and when is that? When is that? It's in June, the end in of June. June. Yeah. Uh, Talk a little bit about it. So for, for people who, who are in the area or for those who could travel there. <laughs> yeah. Well, traveling from out of the province right now, I think there's still, yeah, there's still a two week quarantine if you come from, mm. so that's, you know, probably difficult. But for anyone within the Atlantic bubble, I think we're opening up the Atlantic bubble again. Um, in yeah. a few but um, for anyone within that, uh, the Atlantic bubble, um, you know, it's, it's okay. You don't have to quarantine. Mm hmm so this is going to be at, at the gallery, right? It's at Art Spa Studios, and I've done it um, five or six times, I think, already. Um, once a year. I didn't do it last year, which just happened to work out since, you know, it would have been canceled anyway. Right. Um, but previously, I, I've done it there at Art Spa, or uh, Art Lab Studios. Art Lab, yes. And I, I, you sent me a little flyer on it, right? It's artlabstudios.ca. Okay. Because then I can, I can put that in our story and promote it as well on our Facebook, web, uh, Facebook page so people will know that it's going to happen. Yeah, I, uh, I think there might still be a couple spots left. Okay. Uh, it's limited to 10 people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's three days and it's a blast. I mean, oh. it's a lot of fun. So what are you going to be teaching? Abstraction? Abstract, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Abstract. Is it just techniques or are you, they going to come home with um, their own painting or is it step by step with you? They're going to create masterpieces. They're going to create their own masterpieces. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's going to be techniques, but it's very hands-on. Um, like I'm not going to be doing like tons and tons of time demonstrating i'm going to be you know painting as well assisting mostly guiding and assisting oh yes yes and you, you will know, be painting than, too yeah so that people can get right into it because you learn by doing right yes i mean yeah most learn by doing of not just by watching someone do it mm -hmm. right and especially yeah. this kind of thing i think it's um it's important to try it and do it to see how the techniques react when you're using them. You yes. Know? Yeah. So. And is this for beginners or someone who has already a good experience in acrylics? I would say not just beginners. Yeah. Actually, probably more intermediate. Right. To have some sort of some sense of color and some sense of how to apply the paint to the you know ground and so on it's right um, yeah it's better if you have some sense of 
tools and yeah. So if this is the three days, is it like the full day? Is it like from 10 to 4 or something? It's from 9 to 4, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 25th, oh. 27th of June. Wow, that's really intense. I like it. It's like an art retreat. It is, yeah. 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 Oh, I got, I got something here from um, Rose Kent, I think. She said, thank you both for putting this live on. <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. yeah everybody for showing up that's kind of for cool. showing up you got a lot of people you got a lot of fans right now so um so how i mean like okay so how would you describe your art like i know it's abstract but and it's more intuitive but it, it, give give me maybe two two sentences that would describe your art um i would say that it's joyful oh yeah. It's lively and joyful and uplifting. Yeah. It's not political. I'm not trying to make a statement. Right, right. Um, it's something that, that for most people, people have told me that it makes them feel. Happy. And it sparks. Not just happy, but it, it actually, and my mother said this, bless her heart. She's, yes. When somebody said, um, they said something about um, not getting it because I was painting abstract and I couldn't see a tree or a, and mm -hmm. she, just, she was aghast. And my mother isn't an artist, but she was absolutely aghast. And she said, well, they just don't understand. You paint emotion. Oh, <laughs> that's big. Oh, mom. <laughs> yes. That's yes. It. It is. It's true. It's true. With abstraction, you're painting emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what I think when I'm painting something and when it's working, that's, you know, it's working when I really, I can feel it and there's some power and energy in the painting. Right. And as long as I don't overwork it and kill that, um, you know, that's when it's a good painting. That it's a good painting. Yeah. When now, have you, fresh. you have a, a few probably in your, in your uh, studio that are unfinished? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure, I do. Yeah. 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 One behind, that one there, that wave thing is unfinished. And uh, yeah, and sometimes I go back in, if I, if I get it back from a gallery and it hasn't sold or something and it's sitting here and I'll go like, oh, I think. I'm gonna change that. Yeah, you can you can uh, revive it, right? Mm -hmm. Or or pivot it into something else, and it grows into a different. It morphs into something different. It and sometimes you, you <laughs> and sometimes you like it so much more, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes my paintings, by the time they're sold, have two paintings underneath them. That's right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, I know, I know, and 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 I think that's that's still part of the journey. Mm -hmm. it, that's why usually when I I tell my students usually that don't get so attached to it because it's going to change. That's you know, okay. you know what? That's exactly right. That's one of the things that I have said in um, in the workshops that I give because it was a lesson that I had to learn myself. It's not precious. No. Like don't be afraid to put more paint on it. Don't be afraid to change it. Don't be afraid that if you do something else to it, you'll never get it back. Because huh, even if you can't get it back, it's just a painting. You're good enough that you can make another one. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's not working. It's not working. And I go, well, why don't you just put on maybe my favorite go-to color is Titan Buff. So I would just go, just, just, you know, uh, slather it or bray or in Titan buff on top of that. And they're so scared because they're so attached to it that yeah. it's going to destroy the painting forever. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. 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 And, so and then, uh, but usually they yeah. trust me and they go for it. And then, and then they put another color and another color and another color and it, it morphs into so much life. 
Yes. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that you do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a lot of, uh, I guess, I, I guess, Monica, it's a lot of uh, um, just be brave, right? Just be brave. And let, let go. Yep. Let it talk to you. <laughs> Those are exactly the words that I, you know, say to the students. Yeah. Be brave. Be bold. Mm hmm it's not then let just do it yeah and and to have the confidence that you can mess it up but you're not really messing it up right just to know that you're gonna be able to learn something from this and make something even more beautiful the next time around right right now the painting that i i put on our poster do you still have it i do it's Really, I have these 17 foot ceilings in my living room, so it's really up it's high. high, it's way up there. So, you so can't go up there and show it on our live, <laughs> but I'm I being could, demanding. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> I, could, I'm, I could walk into the yeah, I could if you want. I'm joking, no, no, it's okay. It's just maybe we can talk a little bit about it. People can go back to the poster. And and see it's 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 a uh, it's born to be free, right? So mm -hmm. what's the story about that? Well, that was a that was a big one. Again, I went back in and changed it a little bit. Um, that one, I had it for a while, and then I went back into it. Um, and that one's um, in the series that has a lot of layers. Mm. So. Um, you know, there's, it starts with a very thin layer and then I look for the shapes and I sort of discover the shapes and I accentuate those. And then I start layering sort of translucent colors over it so you can see um, what's underneath coming through. Yeah. And the ones that I do that have that, when you look at them in the daytime without light on it, they look totally different than they do at night when there's a light on it, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. pops because what happens is the light goes through the layers right it just pops it just, it just comes to life right it comes to life it's almost like you know when you put um like a varnish over something and mm -hmm. it and it brightens up and you can see the depth you can see the depth yeah you see See all the, the way through yeah in you know yeah. history oh it started with brown then it became red and then it became something right yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. you're playing with transparent colors so do you glaze do you use a medium when you're when you're glazing in thin washes um no i don't know but what i do is um when I put the paint on, well, certain paints, you know, are more transparent anyway, right? Right, right. So, um, and also when I put the paint on, I kind of put it on so that there's, you know, this is the brush, that it's loaded on this end of the brush, and then on one tip of the brush, but not on this. So then when I swipe it across, it's sort of, and then I can pull it out, so it ends up being thicker fun and then thinned out, which yeah. helps to get that dimension, that three-dimensional feeling, you know? Right, right, yeah. And is that is that your your uh, your way of glazing? Whether you're doing the non uh, the uh, non-objective to your cosmos, to your flowers, to your um you know, your water, is it all the same kind of no, steps or process or no? No. Well, the cosmos, most of the cosmos I've actually done in oils. Oh, okay. Which is totally new to me. So I just yeah. started playing with oil. Yeah. Um, so I kind of taught myself and now I've just taken this little workshop. Um, what I'm finding with oils is I like to use the night, the palette night. Oh, you're going thick. It's weird, eh? <laughs> no, no, Which it's not weird. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but with the you know with the um, 
acrylics, I started out using a palette knife, like the, the Mary Pratt painting that yes. I got the award. That's done um, with a wash. Oh, I forgot some paint on my finger. Um, the wash and then palette knife, a lot of palette mm. knife work, mm -hmm. right? And then I got away from that and started doing more brush work. And now I'm going back to palette knife. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's funny because I, we, we probably are on the same journey here <laughs> because I'm listening to you because when I do acrylics, I go with layers and layers. So I like to glaze a lot and I'm going very thin, very mm -hmm. thin. And I use glazing liquid. So I use a medium. Oh, but when wow. I'm doing my oils, I go thick. So that's when I do my palette knife. So right. it's so weird. It's like we are <laughs> yeah. on the same on the same uh, path here for some well, reason. I, I feel quite honored to be in such good company. <laughs> yeah. Oh, same here. Oh my God. Uh, hey, Mary Pratt Award. Oh gosh. So yeah. I, I, you've I can't. Got few, you've got a few awards of your own, Marissa. Mm. Uh, well, well, thank you, thank you, but not the Mary Pratt yet. <laughs> Mary Pratt is so awesome and it's coming soon. It's going to be in the fall. So that's for the elected members exhibition. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we get a lot of uh, members to apply for that because it's, it's going to be a very, uh, a, a very um, wonderful show. And I think hopefully it's going to be live. Hopefully it's going to wow. be live. That yeah. Would be awesome. So that'll be, that'll be so good. But uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted. Um, with the newsletter and, and social media on that. Yeah. So um, how long have you been a member now of uh, the Society of Canadian Artists, Monica? Hmm. Um, I'm guessing like at least eight years. Eight years? I think. Okay. Yeah. As an elected, did you apply right away as an elected or, or did you apply as an associate first? Um, I think I applied as an elected. I didn't get in the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got in the second time, though. Yeah. So what would you recommend for those who are on the verge of applying and, and are still thinking about it? The call out has ended yesterday. Mm -hmm. So for those who are just on the verge and will probably prepare for the next call out, what would you recommend they, they start doing? Well, you know, I, I was a juror on one of those, um, for one of them. So I got yes. to see the way people submit. Yes. So it was kind of interesting because, um, you're not drinking wine. I thought you were going to be drinking. I'm going to drink wine. Yeah, for sure. I'm just drinking water right now. <laughs> Turn water into wine. <laughs> oh, okay. um, so I think one of the really important things is that people submit a body of work that is similar, not a best of. Yes. Um, but things that are recognizable in one series. Right. Um, and not just all over the map. Right. And of course, I understand that the, the sort of community associations and and that is important too but um you know writing a decent taking the time to write a decent statement and and putting putting together a portfolio where the photographs are actually well taken they're not sort of you know like cropped and good colors and professional right like yeah it's a professional organization. You want to present yourself professionally. Yes. And so I think those are some of the things. Yeah. And what made you apply as an elected? Well, I had a little encouragement from my friends at Art Spa, which is a, a group of artists that we, before COVID hit, um, yeah. used to get together every Tuesday in the fire hall and paint together. It's not like a lesson or anything. We just get together and paint. And um, a few of the members there, Andrea, one of them, um, <laughs> yeah, were members and, and just kind of encouraged me to do so. Because it, it helps um, 
And especially at that time when I applied, I didn't have sort of a history of galleries or anything. So um, it helps you get comfortable with the idea of being in exhibitions and, you know, it gets your work out, out of the city and into other venues. And, and it's that community of other artists you're exposed to suddenly a lot of different a stuff, lot. different people. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 um, even though we are you know uh, um, geographically apart, <laughs> uh, we try to we try to encourage each other, especially when we have shows, and mm -hmm. and especially the live shows uh, uh, really bring a lot of people together. So, yeah, really really encourage everybody We're more to out here instead of in Toronto so much, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank yeah. you. So um, you also have wearable art that that you are also, um, you know, promoting and merchandising. Um, how did you get into that? If you can just briefly talk to us about it. Well, it's the company in Montreal who... Oh, who yes, made, yes. Uh, they actually reached out to me. Um, oh, I, wow. Yeah, but they reach out to lots of people. It's not such a big deal um th they have beautiful product um it's not inexpensive it's but it's really good quality right um i haven't actually been promoting it much it's <laughs> on my site but yeah you know it it's difficult to promote it because people want to try it on of and, course you know so and then you're dealing with sizes and stuff so I think going forward, if I do anything like that, it will be more towards items that aren't size oriented. Yes, yeah, because it's hard, right, when you have yeah. to wear it. Yeah, um, I mean, but you... I happen to own a whole lot of it myself. <laughs> but you do have the scarf, so the scarf oh, yeah. is pretty. It's pretty uh, transferable to any size. Yes, um, the scarves but, but are yeah, super easy, and they're beautiful. The yeah, are... I've I've seen it. And I've seen you wear it at the oh, Artist Project the a few years at, back. At the Toronto Artist Project. Mm, yep. Right. Yeah. That's when I last hugged you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, so long. It's oh, been so yeah. long. So um, let's do a little rapid fire. So this oh. is when you have to have your wine. <laughs> oh. I pour it. Cheers. <laughs> so for for the rapid fire. Okay. Mm. Mm. Cabernet Sauvignon, I am. Mm. What are you drinking? Shiraz. Ah, yes. Very good. Very good wine. Who is your favorite artist? Oh darn. Okay, so <laughs> I love Blue Smith for his like contemporary artists. Yeah. His colors. Yes. His, his brush strokes and mm -hmm. strokes. Um, I already mentioned like James Terrell. I mean, the light. Right. Really. Yeah. And um, Peter Kirkland, who's at the same gallery as I'm in, in Mississauga, the Crescent Hill Gallery. Okay. There, and that's where I first saw his work. Oh, it's so sensual. It's just this, these ribbons of, color and it's wonderful yeah and of course like all my art spa friends of course of course and myself right <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, all my sca friends all your sca friends yay yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's it's... so much talent out there it's absolutely mind-boggling yeah yeah if you saw uh, the uh, open international jury show uh, which is right now currently our show online. Oh my God, all the art there, outstanding. Sometimes I feel like, what am I doing? I can't, yeah. You know, like these people these are people. creating. Bodies. Yeah, and sometimes I, I think, I say, why didn't I think of that, right? Yeah, and then you look online, of course, there's like, like wonder, like there's the whole range. There's, you know. A gazillion. But, yeah, yeah. Some so if you were going to have dinner with a famous artist, dead or alive, who are you going to have dinner with? 
Oh, a famous one. Now, you just asked mm, famous. I was going to answer it as a not famous artist. Okay. Dead or alive? Say well, it. If I, you were... So, my father was a fabulous artist. Okay. He... I didn't get... I didn't have a, a long-standing relationship with him, but okay. um, as a child... Um, he was like he was an when I w was a child, he was just an incredible inventor. He was like he had that Michelangelo inventor mind, you know, and he he could paint or build or sculpt or invent anything. And I wish that I had had. Oh, I'm gonna get emotional. You had time with him. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could have bonded with him about the art then yeah what's his name monica really do i have to <laughs> i mean it's not somebody you would recognize he didn't he wasn't an artist he didn't get to live out his dream oh he um he was an artist privately right um, but he worked to support his family. To support his family, yes, yes. Oh, well, yeah. this is very emotional for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Wee! Yeah. Okay. So, what is your favorite color? Blue. Why? Oh, it's just, it's healing, it's inspiring, it's all around me. The no yeah. I know <laughs> all your artwork has a uh, uh, blue, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. it's predominantly blue, all shades. Yeah, it's blue is all I mean blue is all around me, right? My eyes are blue. <laughs> are um, you by the ocean? I'm I live on a lake, but I'm right like <sighs> when I drive out my street I see the ocean. Oh my gosh. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful, so, Monica. Where? Yeah. Wow. So if you had a motto, uh, a, a motto, what is your favorite? What's your favorite statement? Mm, life is brief and fragile. Do that which makes you happy. Ooh. Yeah. So do you have it hanging around your studio or it's just in your heart? It's here. Oh. <laughs> That's deep. That's yeah. deep. Really yeah. Wow. I like it. Say it again. Life is brief and fragile. Do that which makes you happy. Oh, yeah. Now we go back to your dad. Well, and, and other people. And yeah. other people, yeah. Other so, people in my life I've lost. Yeah. In your life. Name your top three inspirations. Could be anything. Um, Could be music. The scenery out my window, I overlook this gorgeous lake with islands and the wind howls like crazy here. Um, music, sure, lots of fantastic music, Mowgli, um, pre-summer. Those are lots your inspirations. Jazz, yeah, lots of great music. Um, Jesse Cook. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard Jesse cook in a while. Oh, I got to put that on when I paint. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of uh, um, podcasts right now. I shouldn't do that because it makes you think. You kind of want to free your oh, mind. No, but I do that too. I Or I'll listen to audio books when I'm painting. Oh, them. yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. but then, then you're right. It takes too much to focus on that. Yeah, music is better or complete silence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love going for hikes along the the rocky shorelines, like rock hopping, you know, along the ocean. Right. Uh, like that just gives me energy. That oh yeah, gives of energy. Yeah. Well, my my inspiration is pretty much the forest and and creeks and. Yeah, bodies of water because we like yes. to we like to canoe. So can't wait for summer. Yeah, Woo! yeah, Hi, that's oh. that's where I get my inspiration is nature, definitely. 
yeah. yeah when I take the kayak out here and the water sometimes the water is like a mirror oh and, you know click click clicking it's too bad I don't paint those scenes but somehow it still comes it's through. there it comes through your abstracts it's it yeah. still does yeah it's it's the it's the feeling I think mm -hmm. the feeling of peace when you're out there and the beauty of the light in the water, you, oh, you capture yeah. that in your water. Oh, thank you. You do. So you you yeah, do. I, it just fills me with so much joy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad we had this time to chat. But um, listen, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're down to uh, our time is almost up. So I'd like to... Um, let our viewers know how they can get in touch with you and see your work. Um, on my website, probably the best is um, on my website, monicawright.com. And Monica is with a K, not a C. So M-O-N-I-K-A. Yes. At, oh, M-O-N-I-K-A-W-R-I-G-H-T dot com is my right. website. Or, you know, there's always Facebook and Instagram and all those things. Are you on Facebook a lot or Instagram more? Um, I'm on both. In fact, I yeah. finally got the business suite figured out. So now when I post <laughs> one, it automatically goes to both. Yes. Yay. <laughs> you, you save up on, on time, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I'm more on Instagram a lot. That's why I am on Instagram Live <laughs> um, than Facebook. Yeah. Sorry, I had something flying here. We have our cats and their hair is like, woo! Yeah. So they can see your work through your website, monicawright.com and Facebook and Instagram. And your handle on Instagram is Monica Wright, right? Right? Uh, right? Monica Wright Artist? I think. Oh, Monica Wright Artist. I think so. Yeah. And and same as well with your, your Facebook, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. And so you're you're having your, your um uh workshop in June. Mm -hmm. And are you having any live shows perhaps in the fall? Um well we're due in June there's going to be also a show in Parsboro at the Art Lab Studios because they all also have a gallery. Okay. So um, there'll be some work there. Um, and, and I, they will be open at that time. Um, and then we're also doing, uh, Denise, Andrea and Sarah Jane and I are doing a small group show, um, at the Flying Apron. Uh, I think that's, oh, and then there's the Peggy's Cove Area Festival of the Arts. I always have to think about that one. Um, there's the open studio thing, which will it, also be in July. And hopefully, Monica, you try and apply for the elected member show. Um, and if it's going to be live, then maybe I'll, I'll see you there. Well, you know what? Now that you've said that, you've challenged me so hard. Because <laughs> it's going to be in the fall and it's going to okay. be in Fredericton, I, I believe. So. Oh, in Fredericton. Okay. Well, then I'm Galleries, good. Gallery 78. Oh, I love them. They they carry my work there. They represent me, and they're they're the most wonderful people. Honest to God. So hopefully, they, it, it it keeping fingers crossed because we we don't know. Uh, we're on the uh, you know with COVID around. We have to take all precautions, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but you know that is such a wonderful gallery. Yes. Yeah. And they're, they're so nice there. They're yeah, they are. So they are. And we were there uh, two years ago. Not last year, I think two years ago. And, and they were wonderful. Wonderful. Well, yeah. that's where I had the Mary Pratt thing. Yes, and I, I wish I could have seen you then. <laughs> Which, by the way, Peter Goff started that, right? Mm. So it's extra special. That... Extra special. Yeah. Okay. Well, my dear friend, we have to sign off now. And, and uh, I just wanted to, I wanted to um, give my heartfelt, heart most um, love and, and thank you that you are my special guest tonight at our art, cha art chat. 
and for sharing your process and and uh, encouragement to everyone who's watching. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. I was nervous like crazy, but I thank you for making it so much fun. Yeah, and we had our wine, so we could... <laughs> There you go. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be so nervous, and and uh, hopefully everyone uh, was able to uh, listen in and enjoyed our chat. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Marissa. Happy and painting. it's happy painting, and it's Marissa Sweet uh, from the Society of Canadian Artists. We're signing off now. Thank you for joining our art chat with Monica Ray. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Please.